Many heroes, brutes and savages, walk the twisting paths of the mirrored city. Some seek an escape from the maddening prison, others relish the endless violence, or seek to remake ill-fated Shadespire in the image of their merciless god. All are damned to an eternity of suffering, unless they can break the curse that binds them. Clad in gleaming sigmarite and armed with heaven-forged weaponry, the Stormcost Eternals are champions and heroes all, defenders of civilization and sworn enemies of chaos. They were once mortal heroes, hailing from across the realms, now gathered together by the God King Sigmar and remade into the physical embodiment of the Celestial Storm. They are living legends, who wage the eternal war against the Dark Cots. The greatest secret of the Stormcost Eternals is the process of reforging, by which the soul stuff of fallen warriors is borne back to Sigmar's realm of Azirheim upon bolts of lightning, and there transmuted into flesh and metal. This process renders each Stormcost immortal, though such a powerful gift comes with a heavy toll. With each death, a Stormcast Eternal loses a part of their humanity, becoming cold and distant, and losing grip upon the fragmented memories of their past life. The warriors under the command of Liberator Prime Severin Steelheart and the Grizzled Hunters led by Hunter Prime Sanson Fastrider were part of a detachment sent to Shadespire to investigate potential curses for this ailment. Now they find themselves trapped, separated from their kin and from each other with only the whispers of the dead to guide them home. Liberator Prime Steelheart is a veteran of countless battles and a charismatic and respected leader. His warriors would follow him even to the gates of the Blood God's citadel. Obrin the Bold is a bull-hearted giant of a man. Obrin was always the first to laugh and make jest until his third reforging, now he speaks little and only seems at peace in the heat of battle. In another life, Angarad was a smith whose master crafted blades were desired by warriors far and wide. Now she puts her hammer to the task of perching heathens and savages, a calling she has joyfully embraced. It is said that even if Sanson Fastrider were to find himself in the halls of the Crystal Labyrinth, he would find a way free. Such is his supreme talent for wayfinding. The solemn and reserved warrior known as Eagle Eye has an almost preternatural sense for danger, which has saved the lives of his companions on countless occasions. In his mortal life, Elias Swiftblade was a wandering duelist a master of the sword who cut down countless champions of the Dark Gods. The Bloodbound are mortal warriors who have sworn themselves to Khorne, god of carnage and slaughter. Blinded by battle madness, lost to the exultant sensations of combat, they care for nothing but the kill. Gathering together in vast war hordes, they maraud across the realms, butchering and despoiling in the name of their dark master. Blood reavers such as the band led by the brutal killer known as Garrick Gorebeard are frenzied cannibals, mortal whose dark excesses have drawn them even further into the thrall of the blood god. They eschew heavy armor, preferring to feel the blood spatter across their chests and chase their prey as tirelessly as hunting wolves. Blood warriors are towering, plate-armored killers who have taken the first step down the path towards demonic ascension. A life of constant war has forged them into mighty champions of ruin, whose unquenchable lust for slaughter drives them even onwards in search of the next battle. Garrick took over as chieftain of his murderous band after biting out the throat of a rival. The blood that flowed forth to stain and mat his beard earned him his fearsome title. Blooded Syke has lost himself entirely to the red rage of Khorne, 
The only sound that pass his lips are bestial growls, and the blood-chilling screams let loose as he hurls himself into the thick of battle. Cossus the Chained was once a slave until he used his shackles to choke the life from his masters. He bears his chains still attached to a many-notched axe that has claimed countless skulls for corn. Targor and Arnulf are recent additions to the rank of Garrick's killers, members of a conquered tribe who chose to walk the path of skulls rather than suffer a slow, torturous death. The fiend Magor Redhand leads his blood warriors through the mirrored city, tracking the hated Stormcast Eternals with the aid of his loyal fleshhound, Riptooth. Should they fall upon their quarry, they will tear them apart, and with the blood of the fallen, they will defile the mirrored city so utterly that Korn's eye will be drawn to this damned place and to the gory tributes of his loyal servants. A macabre transformation came over Red Hand during a battle with the hated Stormcast Eternals, a truly mighty gift from Gorn. A slavering demonic maw erupted from his stomach, decapitating the Lord Castellant about to lay him low. Orcs are savage, muscle-bound creatures who live for the crash and crunch of battle. Iron yours are the mightiest of their number, clad in thick plates of rusted metal and wielding huge jagged weapons forged from the same. They are a constant threat across the mortal realms, sweeping across the earth in great hordes and smashing everything in their path. Gersarg, Ironskull and his lads were trapped in the mirrored city decades ago. After an ill-fated looting spree amidst the ruins of Chadespire, Ironskull was initially furious, but in the years since, he has grown rather fond of the place after all. What self-respecting Oruk would decline an endless cycle of violence and bloodshed? Gersag has come to appreciate the mirrored city, for in all the years he has spent trapped here, he has never run out of things to smash. Bonecutter might not be the most cunning of Oruks, but he makes up for his lack of wits with a seemingly boundless capacity for gleeful violence. Tagging along with Gerserg and Bonecutter are Hacker and Basher, more than well living up to their names. The Duardin, known as Fire Slayers, are fearless and intractable mercenary warriors. They will fight for anyone in exchange for Urgold, the magical resource which fuels their great strength and which they believe is the spiritual essence of their warrior god, Grimnir. To a fire slayer, honor is paramount. Once an oath is given, it must be fulfilled, and to abandon one's word would be seen as an act of unthinkable disgrace. It is for this reason that the fire slayers of the Vostag Lodge still bear the shame of their failure to protect Shadespire. Hundreds of warriors have fallen or been lost in the attempt to banish the curse that haunts the city. Yet no fire slayer would ever suggest that the venture be abandoned. The legendary rune father Fuel Grimner ventured into the ruins of Shadespire many years ago and still walks the shadowed streets of the city's dark reflection with his loyal companions. Though he has made little progress during the decades he has spent in the mirrored city, the redoubtable old fighter has not yet lost hope of restoring his people's treasured honor. Long ago, the fire slayers of Vostog Lodge failed in their oaths to protect the city of Chadespire. Fuel Grimnir, a former rune father, sacrificed his birthright to enter the mirrored city, end the curse, and restore the honor of his people. Tefk is Fuel Grimnir's loyal right hand. Even long years spent traversing the nightmarish labyrinth of Shadespire have not dulled his ebullient spirit. The eldest of Fuel Grimnir's band, Vol Orokbane, is a tailspinner and war shanter. He enjoys nothing more than bellowing songs of glory and heroism while he carves into Fuel Grimnir's foes with his great axe. 
Magrim was always a little unhinged, even before he took a Goggins hurled boulder to the head. He might be unpredictable and occasionally loses himself to battle frenzy, but Fuel Grimnir has never doubted Magrim's loyalty or selfless bravery. The death rattle of Shadespire are quite unlike the typical Shornal slaves raised by minor necromancers and practitioners of fell magic. Their sole animus remains trapped within their decayed forms as a result of the curse of Nagash, and thus they retain a fragmented memory of their past lives long after their flesh has rotted away. Over time, many of these unfortunates have sworn themselves to the God of Death's service, praying that by petitioning Nagash for forgiveness, they may be freed from the agony of their existence. Greatest among the faithful is the sepulchral warden, the former Lord Marshal of Shadespire. Such is his devotion to Nagash that this enigmatic creature has been gifted with the power to inspire frenzied devotion in his subjects, and he directs them against all who would challenge the great necromancer's will. Though the champion retains fractured memories of countless battles, he cannot recall whether he fought for duty, honor, or coin. None know when the harvester first took up his scythe, or whether he once wielded it in life. What is certain is that he uses it to reap a terrible toll in death. Centuries ago, the Prince of Dust commanded vast legions and decided the fate of kingdoms on a whim. Now, he is but another tortured servant of the great necromancer. Many of Shadespire's lost souls believe that only by acknowledging their sins against him and begging for great Nagash's forgiveness can they escape their endless torment. Skaven are a race of malicious and devious ratmen enthralled to chaos. Seemingly infinite in number, the swarms of the great Skaven clans blight every corner of the realms, scampering forth from hidden lairs to enslave and prey upon the other mortal races. It is fortunate indeed that the ratfolk are naturally treacherous creatures, constantly backstabbing and betraying one another in search of personal power, for if they were to unite in one cause, the clans would be all but unstoppable. Warlord Scritch Spiteclaw leads a particularly murderous and spiteful band through the mirrored city, searching for artifacts and trinkets to loot, and an escape route by which he can claw his way to freedom. Yes, yes. Kirk is Spiteclaw's second in command, at least until his master meets with some kind of unfortunate accident. His sadistic cruelty is impressive, even for a Skaven, as any of Spiteclaw's lowly pack rats can attest. This skulking killer darts from the shadows to drive his twin blades into the back of his victims, before skittering out of harm's reach, a quintessentially Skaven approach to combat. The great horned rat has blessed this lowly pack rat with a bounty of festering boils, rashes, and buboes. His weapons are similarly encrusted with foul-smelling grime. Some Skaven develop a ferocious hunger for raw flesh that cannot be sated in battle. This manifests as a ravenous madness. The frenzied swipes of their crude weapons can be just as deadly to their own kind as to their intended prey. This is Mats again, chiming in to thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment, and to not miss out on future content, ring the bell as well. And if you really liked this video, feel free to click the thanks button just below this video. And if you want to support me even further, you can now become a channel member and claim the title of Critical Focus Fan. Until next time, take care, bye.